Whether emptying the streets of Times Square, wrecking state-of-the-art sports cars for fun, or blowing up real military ships, the movies on this list have invested heavily in solitary scenes. Lasting mere minutes, these sequences are the most expensive movie scenes ever filmed. Vanilla Sky sets the tone of surreal, reality-questioning confusion from the opening scene. The perfectly groomed, gray-hair-plucking playboy millionaire David Ames wakes as Radiohead's Everything in Its Right Place aptly lyricizes his life. Immaculate, flawless, perfected. Yet, as David drives his vintage Ferrari through the streets of New York, the first cracks in this illusion appear. He drives to Times Square, the crossroads of the world, with approximately 330,000 daily passers-by. It's completely empty. Not even the faintest hint of the usual hustle and bustle. David wakes abruptly. It was all a dream, a false awakening interpreted by his therapist as a metaphor. Well, I suppose the empty street meant loneliness. <laughs> You're a shrink. You gotta do better than that. At only 30 seconds of screen time, the scene provides a fundamental function in the narrative, questioning the nature of reality and our relationship to dreams. Surprisingly, no CGI was used. Instead, director Cameron Crowe struck a deal with the NYPD to close off the area between 5 a.m. and 8 a.m. on a Sunday in November 2000. The result was a spectacular sequence with a spectacular price tag, over $1 million for 30 seconds of footage. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Combining Cruz's enigmatic star power with the desolate backdrop helps create a poignant scene lacking in the 1997 Spanish-language original Open Your Eyes. In I Am Legend, Will Smith roams the post-apocalyptic streets of New York City as Dr. Robert Neville, a virologist attempting to find a cure for the zombie-producing Crippen virus. To create the feeling of desperate isolation, the film, like Vanilla Sky, has empty streets to match Warner Brothers' empty wallets. However, a substantial chunk of its $150 million budget was allocated to a much more populated scene, capturing Neville's tragic separation from his wife and child. In flashbacks, the audience sees that New York City was evacuated and placed under quarantine during the outbreak. In a race against time, Neville's family boards a helicopter to escape. Then comes a breathtaking moment of tragedy. The military bombs the Brooklyn Bridge. Amidst the chaos, the blazing bridge collapses into the water below, and Neville's family tragically dies in the ensuing accident. A fair share of digital magic was used to capture the missile's impact. Still, the surrounding evacuation was shot on location across six nights, requiring the cooperation of 1,000 extras, 14 different government agencies, an expansive lighting rig, and a crew of 250. Increased bureaucracy post-9-11 made acquiring the green light on the project a task that cost a cool $5 million. Think of James Bond, and what's the first thing that comes to mind? Aside from a cat-stroking evil genius, cool gadgets, and Bond girls, the answer is probably luxurious cars. After all, what would 007 be without an Aston Martin DB5 for company, a car featured in seven different installments? Snazzy automobiles are largely part of the series' mythology, and Spectre continued that tradition by placing Daniel Craig in the front seat of the stylish Aston Martin DB10, a car produced exclusively for the 2015 film. Illustrative of the multi-millions Hollywood has to play with, $32 million of Spectre's rumored $300 million to $350 million budget was spent destroying cars. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! The biggest expenditure came from totaling seven of the ten aforementioned DB10s, a fact that will no doubt cause car enthusiasts to shed a tear. Chief Stunt Coordinator Gary Powell told the Daily Mail, In Rome, we wrecked millions of pounds worth. The DB10 sped through the narrow streets of the Vatican at top speeds of 110 miles per hour in a cat-and-mouse chase with a henchman in a Jaguar CX-75. A set amount for this singular scene hasn't been confirmed, but the number of destroyed DB10s were, quote, shot one entire night for four seconds of film, making its cost per footage ratio astronomically high. Smashing DB10s to smithereens is frugal when compared to Brian Singer's Superman Returns. Resurrecting Kal-El on screen nearly two decades after Superman 4: The Quest for Peace, one particular scene depicted Superman returning to Krypton. Abstract, atmospheric, and visually striking, the CGI-heavy sequence is intriguing, channeling elements of thoughtful, slow-paced sci-fi. However, that tone was such a stark contrast to the rest of the film, a fun superhero movie, that Warner Brothers chose to cut it out of the final cut. It was a bold decision, not least from a financial perspective. 
Creating Superman's homeworld cost an estimated $10 million, making it one of the most expensive scenes in history, and most likely the costliest deleted scene ever. Superman Returns earned favorable reviews, although it failed to capture the imagination of audiences, illustrated by an underwhelming worldwide box office of $391 million. Maybe that Krypton scene would have helped. Four years after Neo swallowed the red pill and unveiled the true nature of reality in The Matrix, the philosophical cyberpunk sensation returned in 2003 with the second installment in the trilogy. This time, the Wachowskis had over double the budget, which, it's safe to say, they spent wisely. Ignoring the adage, don't play with traffic, the duo rejected digital effects and instead constructed a fake freeway at a decommissioned naval base in Alameda, California. You always told me to stay off the freeway. Yes, that's true. Stretching a mile and a half, the set was the backdrop for Reloaded's white-knuckle chase between Morpheus, Trinity, the Twins, and a host of agents. Surprisingly, the Wachowskis also opted for real-life stunts. Trinity actress Carrie Ann Moss, who overcame a, quote, major fear of motorcycles shooting the scene, told IGN, They needed to have the best stunt people in the world. It was dangerous. You could really feel that every day you went out there. The final result is 20 minutes of mind-blowing, physics-defying carnage and one of the most memorable car chases in cinematic history. As for the total cost, that had the blue pill treatment, never to be revealed publicly. However, the freeway alone cost $2.5 million. Throw in over 100 destroyed cars, practical effects, and CGI, and a significant percentage of the $150 million budget was likely spent on this single sequence. The Second World War was one of the deadliest conflicts in history, with casualties estimated to be over 56 million. One of the most bone-chilling, unfathomably brutal battles, the D-Day landing, was also the largest seaborne invasion in history. Those who weren't there will never truly know what it was like, but Steven Spielberg's acclaimed portrayal in 1998 Saving Private Ryan offers some insight. Most notable is its depiction of the Allies' arrival on Omaha Beach, a tense sequence Empire Magazine ranked as the, quote, greatest battle in cinema. An unforgettable opening 25 minutes depict Tom Hanks' Captain Miller facing impossible odds, marching through blood-soaked sand, outmaneuvering explosions and dodging bullets, leading the way for the Allies' eventual victory at the German-occupied shore. It's filmmaking at its finest. Realistic, immersive, heartbreaking. And it earned Spielberg the Oscar for Best Director. Shot over the course of four weeks, a cast of 750 captured the horror of that fateful day on June 6, 1944. Unable to shoot at Omaha Beach, Spielberg shot on location on the east coast of Ireland, at Cura Close Strand. With minimal direction in the original script, most shots were, quote, spur of the moment and unplanned ahead of time. Spielberg told DGA Quarterly of the approach, it helped make things a little more chaotic and unpredictable. Considering the magnitude of the scene and its lasting cultural impact, its $12 million budget might have been a good deal. Michael Bay is renowned for larger-than-life spectacles brimming with huge explosions and bombastic set pieces, epitomized by his live-action Transformers franchise. Clearly, there's a thirst for big robots that turn into things, with the series earning a total worldwide box office of $4.48 billion. Autobots, roll out! The Last Night was the most poorly reviewed in the series, receiving a measly 15% on Rotten Tomatoes, but that wasn't due to a lack of investment. Its budget was a whopping $217 million, with a large chunk of that spent on location for one particular scene. As previous Transformers installment Age of Extinction concluded in a junkyard, producers were keen to maintain continuity. Phoenix Film Commissioner Phil Bradstock wryly remarked to Phoenix Business Journal, The movie's art director was probably just doing a Google image search for a junkyard and they came across this junkyard just north of Deer Valley Airport. Arizona's authorities won't be complaining about the fortuitous Google image search, though. It led to a hefty investment in the area. In a rare, detailed insight, Bradstock revealed that over the 10-day shoot, producers hired 40 locals to work behind the scenes, as well as 50 local vendors and 3,000 cumulative hotel nights. Two months on location equated to an investment of $15 million, before factoring in CGI and other cost-increasing factors. Marlon Brando was widely regarded as one of the finest actors of his generation, if not any generation, when he won his second Academy Award for his captivating portrayal of Don Corleone in 1972's The Godfather. That film was also a blockbuster, and if the producers of the first big-budget Superman movie wanted to secure the great Brando to play Superman's father, Jor-El, they were certainly going to have to dig deep and pay up. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Brando ultimately appears in 1978's Superman the Movie for about 10 minutes out of the film's 143-minute running time. And yet he received top billing. 
over both Academy Award winner Gene Hackman, who played Lex Luthor, and relative newcomer Christopher Reeve, who actually portrayed the lead character. In addition to an appearance fee of $3.7 million, Brando was also contractually obligated to take home 12% of the film's profits. The former Godfather's take was $19 million. In 2020 dollars, that's about $75 million. And this doesn't even count the expensive-looking Krypton sets that filmmakers had to build for Brando's brief scenes. It's almost impossible to imagine the magnitude of the production behind Ben-Hur. The 1959 adaptation of Lew Wallace's novel and remake of the 1925 silent film of the same name is memorable for its extravagance. A stunning nine-minute chariot race is the crux of Wallace's story and William Wyler's feature gravitates around the same centerpiece. Enduring acclaim is a deserving accomplishment. Following five years of preparation, the production was tireless and demanding, including 300 sets covering 140 acres, nine sound stages, and thousands of extras. Set at Cinecitta Studios in Italy, it was the largest film set of its era. The arena alone, set in the fictional ancient city Antioch, was built by a construction team of 750 workers, created to capture the race between Judah, Ben-Hur, and Masala. Shot over 10 weeks, the singular scene cost $4 million. In today's money, that's over $34 million, or around $3.7 million for each minute of footage. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer wanted the experience to lure audiences into theaters, though, and it worked. To this day, Ben-Hur is one of the highest-grossing films ever, proving sometimes that hefty investments pay off. In 2001, director Michael Bay, at the time best known for Armageddon, took his penchant for big explosions and dazzling effects shots and applied them to a story set against the backdrop of actual historical events. The result? Pearl Harbor, an epic action movie that takes place primarily during events leading up to the 1941 Japanese military bombing of the U.S. base in Hawaii. Bay went all out to realistically and graphically depict the bombing of Pearl Harbor, one of the most famous and destructive acts in American history. And this is no computer-generated mayhem and bloodshed. Bay used practical effects, and a lot of them. The crew employed the use of 700 sticks of dynamite and 4,000 gallons of gasoline to properly blow up six inactive ships from the Navy. It took around a month to set everything up, and the director certainly didn't want to miss anything, so he set up 12 cameras to film it all. In all, this one scene in Pearl Harbor cost approximately $5.5 million. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.